So we've all been through FreeCAD and swapped between the different workbenches when we're using our workflow. For instance, if I come over to the part, and if I was working in the part workbench, say adding a cube, adding cylinders, and doing booleans against these, say like so, and doing a cut, then I may want to sketch upon this surface. Now with the part design, if we come over to that one, we've got a sketch tool here. But if we wanted to do that in the part, we would have to come over to the sketcher, select that surface and create a sketch and align it flat face to that and do what we want on here. That's extra clicks because on the part, we don't have that tool on the toolbar. And the same thing happens if you use something like the Curse Workbench, you end up with a workflow in there that we haven't got all the tools available. So how do we get these tools on the toolbar? It's actually quite simple. If we come up to the tools and customize, we go into our customizations for the toolbars, keyboard, etc. If we look on toolbars, these are the toolbars that are currently available. So we're actually on the part at the moment and we can drop this down to whatever workbench we want. Take note, we have a global one here and we come to that in a moment. To add a tool to the toolbars, we have to hit new. This creates a new toolbar and we can call this what we want. I'm gonna call this additional tools. Now the toolbar can be a workflow as well. So if you use a number of tools in a certain workflow, we can actually add those in there. Now we want to place our target tool onto this toolbar. The drop down here is set to the workbench that we want to place the toolbar on. And I'm going to come down and select the sketcher from the source workbench and come down and find the new sketch tool. So this is somewhere down here. There we go, create a sketch. We select it and press the right arrow. And we can select more from here as well if you want them. If you look up on the top right corner, you can see the tools are being added. I'm just gonna remove that tool because I don't need it. And we just hit close. So now our toolbar has the sketch on there, which means we can click on the sketch, X, Y plane, okay. We get thrown into the sketcher. We can do our sketch. We can close and it comes back to the workbench that it was called from, the part workbench. And this saves our mouse movements and clicks. So before we would have to come over to the sketcher, new sketch, and then where we're placing it, and then create the sketch and hit close and then go back to the part. Now we can do this all from one workbench. So I'm in the part, create a sketch, map it to whatever plane we want, do our sketch and then close and return to the part. So it's much more quicker because we just made that tool available. Now, if we look at this tool, it can be moved. So we've got these little embossed dots and that allows you to move this wherever you want. So we can place it above, cross, etc. So we just drag and drop it into place. I'm just gonna leave it there for the time being. Also, if we come over to this toolbar, right click, this allows you to turn this toolbar on and off. So we've got additional tools, just uncheck it and it goes, come back to the toolbar, right click, and additional tools. This means we can build up a workflow in those toolbars and just enable and disable them whenever we want. So to remove that toolbar, if we don't want it, it's just the reverse. We come over to the tools, customize, come into toolbars, select the workbench that it's on, in this case, the part. We've got the additional tools here. Just click on it and hit delete. Or we can remove tools in from here. Just press the left arrow key and that removes that from there and we'll just delete that anyway. So now that toolbar has disappeared. So another tip that I can give you with customized toolbars is to create them around the workflows and that really speeds up that process. For instance, some workflows such as if I come over to the Curves workbench, which is an additional workbench which you need to add from the tools add-on manager, in here you'll find a tool that is known as the sweep to rails. And this requires a certain workflow. So first of all, we need to create in the sketcher, 
So this has already opened one workbench, a sketch. I'm going to go on the XY plane. So we created two rails there, or two edges. Next thing I need to do is come over to the part workbench. So we've gone sketcher to part. I'm going to create a ruled surface across here, control click in both of these, and create a ruled surface. The next thing I need to create some curvature for this ruled surface. One way of doing this is to come back to the sketcher and I'm going to select one of the edges of the ruled surface and create a sketch referencing that edge. So now we've got our shape, we've used the sketcher, we've now got to come back to the curve workbench, select the ruled surface and then control select these arcs these rails here and create our surface. You can then take that surface and approximate the curvature across there. So the different workbenches that we used, we can see we've got the ruled surface, which is a part, and the sketcher, including the curved workbench. So what we can do, let's get rid of that, is create a toolbar for that. Tools, customize, toolbars. You can see we're in the curves workbench here. I'm gonna create a new toolbar. I'm gonna call this sweep to rails workflow, WF, or something like that. And we'll click on that. And first of all, we'll get in the sketcher and look for the Create Sketch. There it is there. And push that into here. Notice it doesn't disappear, so we can create multiple toolbars. Next one we want is the Part Workbench. And we need the ruled surface from the Part Workbench. Next, we'll come over to the Curves Workbench. And though we're already on there. And we'll use the Sweep to Rails. And also we want the approximate tool as well. Let's hit close and what you'll find is a toolbar that has that workflow on there. Now let's say we're creating a toolbar that requires tools from say the draft workbench. So come over to the draft workbench and we'll find a set of tools on here to do movements, rotations, etc. And these can be used in other workbenches. So that's come over to the tools and come down to customize. And I'm gonna to come to toolbars and come over to the part workbench and change this one to the draft. So we've got all the tools on here. Now, if you don't see these tools, let's say we want to use the arc workbench, then you can see we haven't even got the arc workbench on here. To make them available, let's hit close. We need to first come over to the workbench. And what this will do, will load the tools into the palette. Then when we go to the tools, customize, toolbars, and drop this down, you'll see we've got the arch workbench in there. And we've got all the tools available in there. You may come in and see Let's go to the assembly for only part of the tools available or the A2 plus. The A2 plus isn't even in there, so we can't actually go there. So if I went to the assembly for, let's just close out of here and come into the assembly for. So you can see we've got a lot more tools in here. Now when we come into the customize, go into the tools bars, come over to assembly for, you can see that's loaded more tools now. So just watch out for that. If you can't see the tools in there, go to that workbench and you'll be able to load them in. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about are global tools as well. So you can make a toolbar that's available from every workbench. So we can use this global. So this is the destination global here. And when we come in, if we create a new toolbar and call this something like, let's just call this tools and we come into here and we can add tools into this one. So we can go to say the sketch and one we use a lot is the actual create a sketch. 
bring that in and let's pick another one let's come over to the part or the part design and I'm going to put a sub shape binder in there so I'm going to, so I'm going to take that and use the right hand arrow to place it in there if you want to remove them just remember the left hand arrow and we've also got a way of ordering them as well now if I close that let's come over to the start page we've got this toolbar so let's just put it on the start page let's go to something like the fastness workbench and you can see the toolbar there so if you don't see it at first just change to the start page and you'll probably see it. you can see it over here so this appears now on every single workbench as a separate tool entity in there so that makes it available from all and again we've got the right click and you'll see tools here so that's the way of getting those tools on your toolbars for workflows for global toolbars or just tools that are missing from certain workbenches that you use a lot less button presses to go back and forth to different workbenches just makes your life a lot easier and you can remember those workflows because you can make those toolbars up with the individual icons even if you duplicate them with the individual workflows and you can right click turn them on and off depending on what you're working on hope you enjoyed that video and i hope to see you again soon if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site i also have a ko-fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.